Now, delegates are meeting in Kenya this week for the latest round of talks on a global agreement to protect biodiversity. The UN warns that a million plant and animal species could be lost in the coming decades. Forty years ago, mountain gorillas were on the brink of extinction, but now, thanks to a huge conservation effort, their numbers are increasing. Our climate editor, Justin Rowlatt, has been to Uganda to see what lessons might be learnt. This park is one of the last two places on Earth where mountain gorillas still survive. So we're just hacking our way through the forest because uh, obviously the gorillas go wherever they want. There are no paths up here. Have you seen something, Luke? Just around here. Ah, oh, there's one down there. There's a gorilla. This is just incredible. You can hear the sound of gorillas all around us. You can't see most of them because the vegetation is so thick. There are baby gorillas in the trees. Adults or juvenile gorillas on the ground. It's incredible to be so close to our, one of our closest relatives on Earth. And that, I think, was a gorilla fart. <laughs> wow. The population is growing steadily. It is a dramatic turnaround. Sir David Attenborough feared he might be seeing the last of their kind when he visited a mountain gorilla family in the 70s. So how have the gorillas been saved? Conservation charities say this, ecotourism, is a large part of the answer. Tourism really does help wild animals if it's done right. When I first started out, there were only about five lodges. Now there's as many as 70. The, the lodges have created jobs. The NGOs have created jobs. But tourism alone will not be enough. The UN says the world needs to set aside a third of all land and sea to protect biodiversity. We've been told by scientists, we only have this century. And we only have one planet. There's no planet B. The mountain gorilla shows we can save species from the brink of extinction. The question now is whether the world is ready to commit the money and resources to make it happen on a much bigger scale. Justin Rowlatt, BBC News, Buindi Impenetrable Forest.